Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the tier 3 Japanese carrier, the Hosho. So without further ado, let's look at our commander. We are using Taman Yamaguchi, or Taman Yamaguchi. I'm not sure which one it would be. Uh, we have our uh, commanders as Jersey Swirsky and Henry Hyde for the extra hit points and concealment. We have swatting at flies, one-way ticket, hidden threat, look at me now, and we are legion as our traits. Then if we look at the ship itself, we are running air groups mod 1, air groups mod 2, and Hosho Hall B. Okay, loadout, we are running the community contributor flag and camo. We're not using any boosters. Stats, 33,520 hit points. Aircraft, you get uh, torpedo bombers. 1,794 hit points for the planes. Uh, 103 knot cruise speed, 145 knot maximum speed, which is the biggest difference between these and the Americans. The Americans had more hit points for their, their planes, so they last longer. Whereas the Hosho has lighter planes, but they're much faster. Attack unit size is 2, aircraft per squadron is 6, detectability range 6.7 kilometers, aircraft on deck 10, aircraft restoration time 59 seconds. The torpedoes are capable of doing 5400 maximum damage, they do 40 knots, and they have a range of 3 kilometers. Dive bombers, you get 1545 hit points, so less hit points on the dive bombers, 90 knot cruise speed, 127 not maximum speed, so much slower than the torpedo bombers. Attack unit size is 2. Aircraft per squadron is 6. Detectability is 10, so they're easier to detect, even though they're slower. Aircraft on deck is 10. Aircraft restoration time, 55 seconds, so faster. And the bombs do a maximum of 6570 and have a 43% chance of setting fires. For artillery, you've got 140 millimeters third year type secondary armament you get four of them 140 millimeters like i said range is three and a half kilometers reload time is eight seconds he shell maximum damage is 2400 with a 10 percent chance to set fires maneuverability maximum speed 25 knots turning circle is 740 meters and the rudder shift is 7.9 seconds concealment it has a seven kilometer surface detectability seven kilometer after firing the AA after firing a secondary oh after firing the secondaries and detectability while the ship is on fire is nine kilometers detectability by by air is 6.6 .6. detectability after firing a secondary is 6.6 .6 as well detectability when the ship is on fire is 9.6 and guaranteed detectability range is two kilometers armor very little if any 15 millimeters pretty much everywhere uh, then you look at the superstructures, 19 millimeters at the waterline, but 15 everywhere else. Or 13, sorry. So, very little armor on, on these uh, aircraft carriers, which makes sense. These things are massive, so you've got to save weight. You're, you're hauling around a lot, so you've got a lot of buoyancy, a lot of surface area to displace water, so you still need to save weight on armor. Uh, so, auxiliary room armor. As you can see, 10 millimeters, and then the vital ship part armor is right at slash below the waterline, and it is 6 millimeters and 20 millimeters. All right, so that's the ship. Let's go over the overview. Stealthy aircraft, so they have better concealment, and feeble aircraft, they have below average hit points. The first ship in the world to specifically be designed and completed as an aircraft carrier. This ship was moderately sized and could carry a small air group. She had a decent speed and was only slightly inferior to a light cruiser in terms of armament. She entered service in 1922 and only one of them was built. So uh, yeah, that's not to say that it was the first aircraft carrier. It's just the first that was designed as an aircraft carrier and built as an aircraft carrier, rather than being another ship that was retrofitted with a flight deck to be an aircraft carrier. 
But as we take a look at it, you can see that there, there are some perks. You don't have the giant gaps underneath the flight deck, so I imagine it'll be a little bit more stable than that. But it's also probably a little more um, stable in every other facet. Like, it probably, you see the 140 millimeter guns at the front and the rear to protect the ship. That's where your secondaries are located rather than being off the side. And you've got a bunch of AA down both sides of the ship. And of course, we can launch fighters. So, with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we are going to be on Estuary Domination, and one thing I want to get out of the, the system right off the bat is, I have no idea what I'm doing yet, okay? Let's just put that out there. Just I know a lot of people come to me for, for how-tos and all of that. I have no idea. I, I have literally played all of about five matches in Carriers up to this point. The gameplay you saw yesterday and the um, the Langley was my very first ever chance to be in a uh, carrier. Now, we are in a division with Soviet and uh, Galley, I believe is his name. Soviet's friend. And so we're going to have a little bit of help. Now, initially, Soviet and Galley, they were kind of allowing me to try to get the feel for my carrier. Because it's an AI battle, uh, they're kind of letting me... Uh, get more more damage that way try to test things because I have no idea what I'm doing like this is very early gameplay so that's why I haven't done a how-to or anything like that plus I've been having a lot of issues with my internet the last couple days I've got a technician on the way to fix it but in order for me to upload these I literally have to drive into town and upload it over myself out, out of my cell phone so uh, I appreciate everybody bearing with me I know it's been a crazy week my my videos have been all, all over the place not being able to get uploaded and stuff and so I do apologize, but that's just the way it is sometimes. Like, I live in the middle of nowhere. It's hard to get things to work all the time. So uh, just keep bearing with me. We'll try to get back on track and get everything back to normal. But uh, right off the bat, we use our dive bombers because I need to get more practice with the dive bombers. They are very strong when you can actually use them. Now, the main thing with the dive bombers that I've noticed is you want to wait till you're about two and a half kilometers from your target. And so I've been trying to measure up my distances. And so you can see here, and you always want to try to go for the length of the ship. You don't need much lead on these bombs. And are we going to catch them? We do catch the Dene right there getting 6,500 damage. A very good opening shot uh, right off bat, taking about a third of the Dene's health. You can see this is not what you want to be doing. Uh, turning, you're not actually able to get the shots, but it looks like I'm going to get the bombs away. Are we going to hit them? Nope, not quite. We managed to hit just off the side of a ship. Don't actually do any damage. But uh, they're charging in. Danae is still charging in. And again, uh, my teammates over here, Soviet and Galley, are kind of holding their fire. They know it's an AI battle. We can easily win this. Uh, but they're just trying to let me have more opportunities to, to get used to the craft. And so the big thing that I've noticed about the dive bombers is no, you don't want a lot of lead. Uh, even on fast-moving targets, you don't need a lot of lead. You want to come in from the front, preferably. Um, you don't want to be coming in through the sides of ships and trying to tor or to drop bombs on them. It's a lot harder to hit them that way. Uh, so you can see I'm, I'm coming towards the Dene here. I'm, I'm getting ready to drop the bombs. And you can see once we get inside two, two and a half kilometers, I go for the shot. You can see we've got a pretty good shot here. We take it and we get our first kill with a dive bomb. Woohoo! Absolutely love it. Now, uh, we turn back, and we, we've got another good target here with a battleship. So we're going to go ahead and go for this. And are we going to be able to get a shot? It looks good. And drop him. But we hit just off the side. We do get a defense, but we don't actually do any damage, unfortunately. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to our torpedo bombers and try to go with that. Now, obviously, destroyer is spotted. The battleship's right there. Our guys should start opening fire. Now, this is a domination, and the one thing that I forgot about in this uh, is that it is a domination. We need to be capturing bases. So I should have been going forward uh, to try to get into the base and beat and, and at least defend it if we could. But uh, unfortunately, that ain't what I end up doing here. I see too late that there's somebody capturing B. It's actually a cruiser that came through the mid, as we saw. I did see the cruiser early on, but for some reason in my mind, he was he was gone. Now, Kaiser takes a huge hit here from the torpedoes. Uh, we're starting to get a little bit more involved in the match as far as my team goes. And you can see Galley finishing him off using the Texas. 
and we're gonna try to torp this destroyer here, which isn't preferable, but might be able to pull it off. We tried to give him enough lead. Unfortunately, just not gonna be quite enough lead. I'm pretty good with the torps most of the time, but we just did not give him enough lead. We need, wanted to go for a little bit more than that, for sure. Uh, but we do have our, tor our torpedo bombs back. And so we're gonna, or our torpedo bombs, our torpedo bombers back. And we're gonna try to attack this Karlsruhe over here who has captured our base. So uh, that's our next, our next bet. So first of all, you don't wanna be sitting in the far back of the map. Yes, it keeps you from getting detected, but as an aircraft carrier, the quicker you can turn your planes, the better. So uh, here, we don't get a lot of uh, good chances to hit them, but we're gonna go ahead and let it go. And because of the widespread, because we weren't the most accurate in that one, we were going a little too fast, we are going to catch him with one. And that's going to be quite a bit of damage on him. 4,900 damage. We're up to 14,000. And we're going to go ahead and call our planes back. And unfortunately, we don't have our torpedo bombers back yet, so we're going to go switch to our um, dive bombers and try to dive bomb the guy. Now, it is an AI, but uh, we need to try to get rid of him as quickly as we can. Obviously, Galley is starting to fight. Uh, Soviet's already gone down. We're we're down in this fight. Like this is going to take a heck of a heck of a comeback here for us to pull this off. Um, but as we get close, we get within that two and a half kilometers. We go ahead and go into our uh, attack run, and this is not preferable. But if we can hit him, that would be huge. Oh, we didn't hit him. Came so close, but not quite. Uh, just off the side of him, just a hair. Pull the trigger just a little too early. Um, Dive bombing seems to be the hardest thing to do, but it is actually pretty rewarding with fires. Uh, torpedoes are pretty easy to hit, so they're the more consistent option. We take a shot at them this time, and that one was a much better uh, effort by us, but it landed on both sides of a ship instead of hitting them. So even even getting a good airstrike like that, you this is why I say you want to go like lengthwise of the ship. Now we're getting a much better angle here. Are we going to be able to get a shot? Come on, baby. This is a much better opportunity. We take the shot and we get a hit and a fire. And I tell Galley at this point, I'm fairly confident to go ahead and finish that guy off. Now I am swinging towards him with the uh, dive bomber again, I believe. Or no, I'm in a torpedo bomber, sorry. Um, but we are we are gonna try to head in that direction. I leave that guy for, for Galley. And then I think, okay, well, if Galley's not gonna shoot him, I better get over there because we, we need to finish him off. That cruiser can't live. So uh, I start heading direction, or my direction towards that cruiser, and that's when Galley finally gets the guns on him to uh, finish him off, I believe. Uh, looked like he missed that shot. Probably some bad dispersion. But just as we get in here to go for our attack run, he goes down. So we just kind of wasted that first attack run. But the beauty of it is if you don't attack, if you hold on to your torpedoes, they'll just go back up. You see the timer to the right of your aiming reticle right there? Once that reaches zero, your planes go back up into formation and you, re you can restart the formation from there. Uh, so you don't lose your bombs and, and whatnot. Um, so these are all things that I've noticed so far. Now with torpedoes, rather than the two and a half kilometers, you really want about four and a half kilometers to start your attack run. We're inside that already, but we're kind of heading away from them so we can turn in. Now turning makes your, your torpedo uh, spread wider so you want to try to get it as narrow as possible come on launch okay he's outside of the range you got to make sure that you launch before you get into that orange window uh, we didn't quite lead him enough there I was afraid that if I if I held him any longer we were gonna miss now I started using my left stick to slow down to allow myself more time and this time uh, obviously we screwed the pooch on that uh, didn't get it in time and this is what I've said. You don't really want to be turning on top of your, your uh, opponent like this because A, you're more susceptible to the AA, and B, it's just harder to hit because you just have so so little time. Now here, I try to turn in to get the torque to go where I need it, and it launches it dead straight. Like, it's like, ah, it's, that's no, no bueno. Come on, man. We need to do better than this. We're only at 17,000 hit points. Now, you can see I'm starting to go forward. Uh, I'm going to get into the base and help cap with Galley. Now, the one thing about the Japanese uh, carrier you got to watch is it is pretty quick. So you've got to be careful in that sense that uh, you don't overrun your protection. And I'm going to do just that in this one. Uh, because we don't have the ability to plot your course like they did in PC, you have to think ahead all the time. Langley takes down our Kaiser, and that means it's just me and Galley 1v3. 
and it's going to take a heck of an effort by both of us to pull this off. Uh, so, can we do it? Who is the who is the superior carrier? Now, we've got the Julio Cesare over here. We're going to try to attack him. He's low health. It should be a pretty easy kill. He's on the back side of the island from my teammate, so he's probably not likely to get hit. I could be wrong. Uh, he might be straight out from him and get a good shot over the island. But uh, we're going to try to go for him anyway. We've got the torpedoes on the on the ready, and Julio Cesari survives the shells from our Texas, and I'm going to try to go for the attack right here, but you got to be careful. This guy clearly knows that torpedoes are on the way, and he's trying to dodge one way or the other, try to throw me off, but it's really hard to dodge torpedo bombers in a battleship. You can really, really hurt them. Now, because we have two battleships here, we hit the uh, Julio Cesari, take him down with flooding after two good hits. We turn back, and again, I'm slowing my planes down because I want as much time to get as accurate a salvo as possible away so that we get the maximum amount of hits here. We get both torpedoes in the water, we had enough time to arm, and we managed to get two more good hits. No floods, but two good hits, and we still have two planes left to drop torpedoes. Are we going to get our first ever full, full squadron attack run? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Line them up, line them up, line them up, and drop, drop, drop. Got it. But it's going to be a wide spread, so we're only going to catch him with one, unfortunately. But that was a much better turnaround for our, our uh, planes in this one. Much better. You can see I'm starting to get a little bit more comfortable with everything. Now, what I wasn't looking at was that that Arkansas is coming back towards us, right? And I'm still sailing. Like, this is the part about playing as two different, like, entities, right? You're playing your planes and you're playing your ship. If you forget about one or the other, you're kind of screwed. And so because I just sailed straight ahead, I did help capture the base, which is huge, but I also am putting myself in a bad position to actually get obliterated here in a moment. This Arkansas is absolutely begging for it. We've got another beautiful attack run lined up. And come on, baby, right off the nose, much better looking torpedoes, and we're going to catch both of those right on... Oh, yep, we did... Nope, actually he didn't. One of them did not arm for some reason. That's unfortunate. I don't know if he turned towards us and just got inside range, but one of them didn't arm, so we only got one hit out of that, which is unfortunate. But we go ahead, go straight back to the torpedo bombers. We're going back in. We're going to try to catch him some more here. We've got two more torps loaded. Come on, baby. And this is where, like, being so close to the enemy is a good thing, but a bad thing. He's starting to do damage to me. And if he, if he shoots me with his main guns, it's going to hurt a lot, like he just did. Now, we go ahead, we launch straight off the bow again, and are we going to catch him with two? Looks like one, definitely got one, 4,300 more damage. And you can see just how quickly we can turn this around. Now, I don't want to give him the ability to obliterate me here. I don't want to give him a flat broadside. So I'm trying to, to maneuver my ship now to stay behind his guns. His main guns are not able to track me fast enough as I do a drive-by here. And then his rear guns are going to be on the other side of the ship. So then I got to turn the other direction to try to angle against them. I'm not giving him the option to hurt me. Now look at all the ribbons that we have in this match. We have flooding, fires, we have planes shot down, planes done well. Like We've done all the things. And uh, Arkansas goes down. Now we still are losing heavily. They've had a base advantage for the entire match. But the difference in this game was the carriers. I learned how to, how to get my ship into position and do things and and get quick turnarounds which helped our team we went from what was it 17 to 45,000 damage pretty quickly and now we've got an absolutely beautiful opportunity seeing where his fighters or his, in this case the torpedo bombers came from I could l narrow down his location pretty well and now we see where he's at now he's flying his planes I know he's flying his planes so I go in early you want to get your attack run off before the fighters come overhead. Because if you do that, you have a much better opportunity to get in with a good torp, and we get both torpedoes away, and we fly out. Now, the unfortunate thing about carriers, they have really nasty AA. So we're not gonna get another opportunity with this squadron. He just nukes us, right? Between the fighters and his AA, he just nukes us. But we're able to immediately return to our carrier, start launching more uh, aircraft, and try to get back into position to clutch this out. Now, the game, there's only a minute and a half left. This guy just needs to survive. And if he had been putting himself in a position 
uh, to, to do that. He could have won this game for his team just by doing nothing. But because he stayed up close to where he spawned, he's actually put himself in a bad position to lose this match. And we are unrelenting. We come in again, getting underneath the fighters, and we're dropping the torpedoes. Both of them looking pretty good. Are we going to get both hits? Looks all oh, that dispersion. Nasty, baby. That's definitely going to be two hits. Got him. And that's another 9,700 damage. Now, we we managed to survive long enough with these fighters, so we're going to go back, or these torpedo bombers. We're going to try to circle back around and get another attack run in. We've got very little time left, 40 seconds on the clock. Come on, Spartan. We get the shots. Both of the torps. Nope, just one. Only got one of the torps away. Come on, baby. Come on. Doesn't finish him off. You th you could see it in my face. I was like, oh, he's gonna f he was going to be finished. But no, he manages to disappear. Is he going to survive? No. Galley coming through with the shot over the island to finish him off. Well done, Galley. A heck of a comeback win for both of us. Like that was a that was an interesting one. 68,000 damage done, 13 torpedo hits, lots of planes shot down. Between the three of us, we killed eight of the nine enemies. So I think we did our jobs, guys. So if you like what we're doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.